Okay, you ready? All right. Okay, so let's start um, this next uh, panel. Um, so you're Dujan Ristich, that's right, and um, uh, your Professor Dujan Markin Marinkovic is not here. Okay, yeah, Great, so um, you are PhD candidate and uh, teaching assistant at the Faculty of Philosophy, University of Novi Sad, Serbia, and in sociology. So interested in sociology of communication, knowledge, and culture, and doing research on discourse, ideology, and communication. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to also, for a start, to this presentation, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to, to present this uh, research, which is actually uh, a work in progress, and uh, you will see not many definitions, but some concepts and thinking of reflections of the changes in, uh, that are happening in the cyberspace from our perspective. I wrote it. Uh, I, I put the, the Syria, serious few articles actually on geoepistemology. We call this kind of research between sociology, sociology of knowledge, human geography, philosophy, which is more, in, uh, more about space, but also about some social aspects and philosophical aspects. So, uh, development of information and communication technology signifies development of new forms of social practices that expand the repertoire of social behavior. And within those practices, we can single out new discourses of belonging, new ways of understanding social events, social identities, ways of self, uh, and other representation as well as new forms of power and social uh, control. So the task of our research is the problematization of the techno-social practices, we call them, just to indicate that, it is made, that they are mediated by cyberspace, uh, that are mediated, yes, by the cyberspace, as well as emergent forms of knowledge, power, and space. And as I told, we call our approach geopistemological. Uh, geopistemology is the analysis of knowledge and discourses that are formed through spaces, but also the analysis of space formed through knowledge, power, uh, discourses. So, cyberspace uh, is a type of generic social space, and uh, it is a spatial Venn diagram that has two main characteristics regarding the discourse and identity. Uh, the one is uh, mobility which is actually connected with the production of new meanings, and the other one we call it registration, uh, signifying new boundaries, differences, and distinctions in cyberspace. Our assumption is that mobility and registrations are amplitudes of that spatial diagram, uh, as uh, are also discipline and control. The diagram of knowledge power space is just an abstract sketch or outline that would point to the scatteredness of contemporary tech social practices and uh, this research, our research is <coughs> much more uh, relying on writings of Foucault and Deleuze, especially in Foucault's Archaeology of Knowledge and those, um, his um, programmatic uh, investigations, uh, especially on archives and utterances and, and knowledge itself. So as Foucault and Deleuze were writing, the most important characteristic of diagram is organization <coughs> of functions. Every diagram is a space-time multiplicity and contains many functions, as many as social fields in history. So therefore, quote, the diagram is no longer an auditory or visual archive, but a map, a cartography that is coextensive with the whole social field. And, uh, quotes. What is important is to recognize contours of diagram in the multitude of institutions and practices, and that is uh, one of the tasks or aim research. So mobility in this context uh, represents the modulation and changes in the topography of social interactions and relations. It signifies the possibility for the creation of new social spaces. Cyberspace represents of course that, that possibility since it contains the real <coughs> and mobile digital localities, cyber places, discrete as discrete spaces and spaces resources for different types of social engagement and in the final instance in this context for reproduction of discourses and identity. Mobility is a process of moving people but is also a part of perception, our perception of space and time, who we are and where we are. Uh, 
Uh, it is also one of the constitutive elements of modernity, as, as uh, Sigmund Baum uh, wrote on that. Uh, problem of social mobility opens the question of movement through the social structures as well as spatial mobility, but we can also speak of virtual mobility, where the individual is not physically moving but symbolic. Mobility signifies for various changes of the state, but includes at least three dimensions. Movement, which points to geographical dimension of space, networks, which points to the framework for movement, and mobility, which points to the capacity of actors to move through the space and society, so capacity, when I say capacity, both individual and social capacities, the conditions for, for, for action. Uh, so when we speak uh, of cyberspace in the context of our research, we are trying to single out the techno-social practices of mobility, processes of modulation and practicalization of the structure of new digital media and practices of multiplication of discourses and identities. Registration is the other amplitude of that spatial diagram we are, we are writing about in the last week, and we understand it as the new type of digital boundary in the modulation of the regime of virtual discourses and identities. It is a part of the process of generation of the virtual identities, virtual differences, as well as exclusions, since all the databases, which are actually virtual registers, depend on codes and passwords, and the very possibility of access includes the material dimension and certain standard of living in other words social social conditions so uh, mobility is in physical world is determined by physical geographical conditions administration procedures technology economy culture and in in virtual space we we see the that registration process as new digital boundaries so as i said registers are uh, actually databases they are audio visual archives of cyberspace and they enable and limit that transmission of storage of information. Actually, they regulate and generate that information. Any database can be searched from anywhere on the internet. And there are many similar online databases which value themselves for their comprehensiveness. The claim to comprehensiveness is quite misleading. Anything which is not entered is rendered non-existent. The cost of building and maintaining the database is effectively censors unfashionable ideas, so they never get put onto the databases. The process of electronic marginalization, you can call it like that, is difficult, of course, to document. But while it's possible to represent text, sounds, still and motion, <coughs> 3D modeled objects digitally, not all knowledge or experience can fit that form. So meanings, meanings change with context, and digitization tends to remove information from its context. Standardization of the manner in which information is presented will probably impose a culturally loaded form on what really are diverse data. So type of knowledge which cannot be codified and digitized will become invisible in virtual space. So the point is the database, as point noted by Mark Oster, the database imposes a new language on top of those already existing. Uh, quote, a database arranges information in rigidly, rigidly defined categories or fields, end quotes. So what is interesting, for instance, is that average use of internet technologies, especially when we speak about the sites for social networking, signify a new type of participative social control and surveillance of social practices. They are like oligopticon in terms of human knowledge, where real places becomes, uh, become mobile, they generate technosocial practices and new types of discipline and other techniques of power. As Mark uh, Foster Wright uh, quote, the populace has been disciplined to surveillance and to participating in the process. Social security cards, virus licenses, credit cards, library cards, and the like, the individual must apply for them, have them ready at all times, use them continuously. Each transaction is recorded, encoded, and added to the databases. In many cases, individuals themselves fill out the forms. They are at once the source of information and the recorder of the information. We can also speak about the authentication uh, process, which is actually one, one way to operationalize uh, the, that, that term, the registration that we use. And uh, Lawrence Lassie uh, uh, was writing uh, extensively on, on authentication. Uh, so in this in this context, uh, 
the notion of identity changes. The term identity is not just who we are. Identity, of course, means different facts about us, but perfect authent authentication, as Lawrence Lessig writes, is not picture or subject, but system of information and facts that advance the system of control of users and certain locations in cyber space. So in that sense, the question of reproduction of identity is open in a new way to the new social realities that are generated by databases. Databases include no talking agents, but are advancing the new discursive mediation of society. They are at the same time the outcomes and locations of discourses. They are not something on their own, but articulations in, in terms of Ernesto Latuan and Chantal Mouk of new types of social uh, relations. They are places for differences, sophistication, public participation, cosmopolitanism, integration, communication, collective projects on crowds of sourcing, for example, privatization, segregation, isolation, and so on and so forth. They express, uh, they express the different genres of the usage of technology in the complex interaction of technology and standardized human project in typical social situations. As, uh, and uh, uh, regarding the emergent forms of knowledge, power, space, social functions of mobility and registration in the new diagram are connected with the processes of multiplication of new social realities. So uh, databases, as I mentioned, render the multitude of data and transform them from an unregulated system of information to a regulated system of meanings and knowledge. To speak of emergent forms of knowledge power space is to speak of the play of technologies of discipline on the one hand and technologies of regulation <coughs> on the other that are imminent to tackle social practices as practices of spatialization of discourses. Power in this context is not seen as a model of social practice. That is based on the principles of like Deleuze uh, wrote punctuation or localization. But power is the set of relations between the various tech and social practices. So uh, uh, it is connected with the establishment of different connect, uh, connections between the virtual and real positivity of social interaction. Thus, power uh, can, can be understood as a collection of heterogeneous mechanisms and the quote, like Foucault wrote, multiplicity of relations of forces immanent to field or to area in which they operate and which they organize. And of course, uh, those mechanisms of power are connected with, of course, realization or derealization of subjectivities, identities in service space, digital divides, new ways of social exclusion, deprivation, pathology, reproduction of knowledge, and so on and so forth. So, in conclusion, uh, I would say that uh, one of the general questions we are opening. Uh, by, by this investigation is uh, what actually the transition from, if we can call it panopticism to post panopticism means, does this transition contain this continuity or is a transformation? In other words, does the transition of the panoptical gains and dispositives of power into a new post panoptical geography of scattered power signifies the multiplication of an old model and its translation, but now as the simulation of the fall. That is the point of oligopticism, as I mentioned. So the problem of the transition from panopticism as an old matrix of disciplinary societies into societies of control, like the was said, or post-panopticism, signifies an attempt of a geopistemological identification of a new modulation of space in contemporary society. The capitalist society demonstrated its modular strength many times in its history. Internal historical contradictions and, as Harvey uh, wrote, quote, uh, elimination of spatial barriers and the struggle to annihilate space by time, end of quote, were manifested in the withdrawal of new borders which produced new barriers in new spaces. So in that sense, we, are, uh, we, we, we don't have a like, completely new phenomena of, of production of space. In that sense, capitalism not only managed to reshape the existing <coughs> socially, economically, and politically produced spaces, but it also conquered new socially uh, unformed space, which did not contain only borders, zones, lands, defined places, or hierarchies. What Gilles Deleuze emphasized as a turning point is modulation in the societies of control, opposite the stabilization of disciplinary societies, because uh, quote, the 
disciplinary societies have two goals, signature the decimalist individual and the number or administrative enumeration that indicates his or her position within RMS. In the societies of control, on the other hand, what is important is no longer either a signature or a number, but a code, and code is the password. So new diagram of modulation offers something else, metastability of the condition of the societies of control where nothing that had been started and of course in the end we are uh, now living in the period of the nomination of powerful corporate actors in the sphere of cyberspace and their activity changing the structure of that space as a public domain so cyberspace is definitely not just a medium of communication of individual or collective neutral actors but also a theater for accumulation of capital and operations of global capital we should not forget, as Saskia Sassen reminds us, uh, that internet and cyberspace are global spatial structures and that they depend also on territoriality. They are not like space completely, of course, independent of social, real social world, to call it like that. Um, and space influence, uh, influenced by national, administrative and cultural frameworks. So that indicates the need for comparative and simultaneous analysis of a wide range of spatial levels of social reality from global to local. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for this great talk. Um, questions? Comments? So regarding theoretical uh, basis or frameworks, uh, as I said, the, the, the Foucault's uh, analysis of discursive practices and uh, particularly his approach in the archaeology of, of, of knowledge is some, some kind of background we are connecting with. But <coughs> in the sense that we accept his definition of discursive or discursive practice, but just a general idea and framework because we are entering, in, uh, we don't offer uh, new definitions of discourses or identities, but we are trying to analyze conditions for the production of new types of discourses and, and identities, which was his idea, the, not just to analyze, if we want to analyze discourses, we then don't have just to analyze what is said or written, but the conditions which makes that what is said possible or, or, or in that way. In, in the, like, for the example, uh, I don't know, um, quite the opposite examples can be Project Gutenberg or Facebook on the other side. And uh, Facebook is maybe better uh, example. We also can say that it is a, data, a database. Uh, and uh, the, the example of Oligopicon, because every participant has its own page, uh, has its own digital history, and that personal digital history is of course, connected with the previous actions, with the previous information that, uh, like it's the, the, the play or the game uh, between the, the user and the, the database. Of course, there are some other inputs uh, from, from the outside, not just from the from other uh, personas, individuals, but uh, I think that Facebook could be a good example, or some other social network where people are, uh, in a way, creating information they will see in the next in the next step they have their own uh, digital personal digital histories as well as some kind of uh, containers for for information not just uh, the storage information of their own but from all people that are participating actually okay further questions comments please um, you mentioned uh, these new spaces are actually really bringing a new accumulation of capital. Mm -hmm. And would you say that, in, in a sense, the disciplinary aspect mm -hmm. is really disciplining the users, or I mean, the people present in that space, in order to be really uh, productive in this act of accumulation of capital? And if there is a way then to, to prevent this, I mean, to resist this disciplinary aspect, to say that, okay, I mean, I am in a digital 
that's great, but I don't want to be instrumental, I don't want to be so is there any counter attack to the disciplinary attack that you maybe come across? Yeah, uh, well, I think that is a, uh, also a question that was often, uh, uh, how to say, that was uh, Foucault was also a question, but speaking about power and this, this analysis very close to the, like, where are the spaces of resistance in the death? Uh, so I, I think that uh, the, in the terrain of, for example, some social network, which is actually a, a how to say, database, uh, also at the same time private companies behind the, the, the social networks. So in a way, it's not just the situation they dictate all what is happening, but the, I, what I'm thinking of is just the possibility of decoding uh, the way uh, the first the first level of, exist, of resistance would be the deconstruction of meaning because you cannot escape. I mean, I know that we are surrounded by some uh, private or corporate uh, actors. I cannot annihilate them or make them disappear. But in a way, I can, what I can do as an individual and in, in my community, I can work on the, the restructuring of uh, dominant discourses that are produced by by them. Of course, in the sense, uh, in the context of cyberspace, there are uh, ways of uh, creating uh, like in the real world, like you can create uh, uh, communities which are in a way the, the, the way of life, the style of life different from the, the main mainstream. So in the cyberspace it can also be, I believe, like, but mostly, mostly symbolic, not, not in, a, in, a, in a sense like space for resistance, one way. Um. May I just ask what the, and so you, in your conclusion, you asked whether it's um, uh, turned to a post panoptical. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've already touched on that a bit, but um, I was wondering, do you, I mean, because on the first um, glance, one could say the, the internet is like a perfect example of the Deleuzian um, uh, no centrality, but then if we think about discussions of, um, um, of different speeds of internet, of, of uh, uh, NSA collecting Google, all of this. So, so um, uh, isn't this then an illusion or myth that that there's somehow more that there's decentralized uh, that there's decentralized space? Or is is this for you an open question, or um, or have have you got like uh, would you argue it it is a, a like a post panoptican space? Uh, I'm not, what I'm really not sure. I'm definitely sure since now that uh, we have like different models of, like it's a, uh, we can recognize different models of power relations. So that, that could be like simply said transition from panopticum to oligopticum where we have now mobile places. We don't have a punctuation of power, concentration of power in institutions in the physical places, but power can be the, the territorialized. So we have some kind of control which is the territorialized. And uh, what I really am not sure, and this, this is the, also one of the tasks to, to show, okay, Deleuze said that we have uh, societies of control uh, in opposition to societies of disciplinary societies. And uh, I'm not sure whether uh, he uh, uh, wanted to make a distinction from Foucauldian analysis of, of the power of, of panopticon. Uh, and I'm not sure whether Foucault's analysis could be um, could uh, have the potential to be applied for the, what the West calls societies of control. So I'm not sure about that border. Whether we have now a uh, multiplicity of what Foucault was saying about these possibilities of power in, in, in societies of uh, disciplinary societies, or we have a completely new form that we can can speak of. I, I'm not sure about it. That is one of the questions, yeah, abstract theoretical questions and problems, which I think is not still, uh, so I, I haven't found it in, in the references he was uh, writing about uh, that problem. That uh, does, does it in disconnection or is it just a transition and multiplication? Because it's easy, easy as the postmodernist way to say it's okay, we just have a multiplication. It's not just space, it's spaces. Public space, public space, power, powers. But it's not like it's not simply like like that. But 
thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Okay, thank you very much again. Yeah.